Calling all outdoorsmen and adventurers. Today this video is for you guys, brought to you by Land Rover. So, can you guess what the car is through the glass? I'm pretty sure you guys already know through the thumbnail or the caption. So, it is the brand new 2020 Land Rover Defender. Now, despite everything that's happening in the world, what with the pandemic and even Lebanon with the economic crisis, these four to five Defenders have just been delivered in different specs and colors, and we're gonna be taking a closer look we have the 110 version, so the four to five door version, if you want to call it that. And I hear that the 90, the two door version is, I hope, on the way, fingers crossed. This is the first edition uh, in olive green, and we're going to be comparing it to, of course, the OG Defender, the Series 2. It's pretty cool to have them in these pretty similar colors. So, yeah, without further ado, guys, let's take a closer look at the Defender. So guys, the Land Rover we know of today started after World War II, taking inspiration from the American Jeep or Jeep Wrangler. The Series 2 came shortly after in 1958 and the name Defender came to life in 1990 so they can differentiate between it and the Discovery. Now if you guys remember the older better Top Gear, you'd remember Richard Hammond bidding farewell to the Defender by climbing up a dam. Well, the Defender is back in 2020 and it's been reimagined and redesigned into a more uh, modern 21st century kind of a look. It looks more refined and, dare I say it, cuter than the old Defender, but does it stand up to the name, the iconic name of the Defender, which we've known for decades? Well, we're gonna see throughout the video. It does have uh, design elements and inspirations from the old Defender. For example, these brand new LED headlights with the side indicators taking inspiration from the old Defender. Being a car designed in the 1950s where, of course, form follows function. But what the brand new 2020 Defender has is a monocoque chassis stiffer than any other Land Rover ever made, making it the perfect off-roader. As for suspension, it has independent suspension on all four of these 18-inch wheels, and the 110 comes with air suspension as standard. On the side, we have air intakes on both sides, which can be fitted with a snorkel, part of Land Rover accessories or aftermarket if you want to take your car swimming or you just want to do it for the looks. Moving further back, the design is very low-key, very minimal, very similar to the old Defender. With the major question mark over the design element is this box, what everyone's calling the box. Uh, I'm not sure anyone knows what it's for, but it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Especially fitted under the Alpine glass panels, which are inspired by the old Defender and they're made to, you know, you can look out to the trees and see animals or something like that. I'm not sure, but they are cool and uh, yeah, we'll get to them when we get to the inside of the car. In the back, not my favorite part of the car, but uh, I mean, it does the job. It looks very similar to the old Defender with the rear mounted spare tire, as well as these very retro looking tail lights with the indicators on the side, similar to the front, inspired by the old Defender. I'm not sure how many times I've said Defender throughout this video, but uh, yeah, I should keep count. So yeah, guys, uh, that's the back. I mean, it looks fine. It does the job. Uh, this is the first edition, so you do get extra badges here and there. And uh, yeah, it just makes you feel special because you have the first edition Defender, which have some nice perks and features here and there. And they are generally the first cars to be produced with some nice specs. But uh, yeah, some other elements of the car here is this black plastic, which looks like uh, diamond cut steel. I'm guessing it's uh, to show you something more rugged and like if you want to step on the hood, you should step here, which I doubt anyone will do because it's a very expensive car. 
but uh, I like the whole overall general look of the car. It does pay homage to the actual old Defender uh, in its own sense. I mean, it, it is rugged and it is cute at, at, in, in the same way, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad. And I'm pretty glad to be reviewing it here in Beirut, especially that we have not just one, but, uh, but four in the showroom with another one, actually a silver one, but that, that's not here right now. Different colors, different specs, and I really like this SE one in blue with the matching uh, white roof. It looks really, really nice, and the car is is, is huge, guys. Like you think in pictures, it, it, uh, it's a small looking car, but it, it's big, it's bulky, and just look at it compared to the Velar. It looks so small just sitting right next to it. Pretty cool how Land Rover is catering to different kinds of people, from the Defender to the Vogue to the Velar. The Evoke, there are different kinds of cars for different kinds of people and their tastes. So yeah, it's, it's very nice. Back to the first edition Land Rover Defender in olive green, which I think looks amazing. And I think I would spec mine in this color. Just, it looks iconic compared to the old Defender. Uh, added bonuses of the uh, first edition are these roof rails, which you can toss some stuff up there. And oh, by the way, while I'm up here, let me just show you guys this camera. This isn't your reverse camera. This is a, a camera which you can toggle on your rear view mirror with the basic reversing camera mounted underneath the spare tire. And let me tell you guys, this car is loaded with tech now, not these, these two cameras. Uh, let's just hop into the interior and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so first impressions. I, I love how the olive green paint continues throughout the interior of the car with these exposed screws on the doors, as well as Meridian sound system. So the interior is very utilitarian. I mean, these seats are not like the ones you get on the Vogue, but then again, they're not meant to be. You have the option of having a three-seater bench, but on these ones, we have just the two seats in the front, which I actually prefer. Uh, dual kind of leather, what is this? It's like a, like a cloth slash leather. Very utilitarian, but that's what it's meant to be on, on a car such as this and uh, other cars such as the Wrangler. You have these handles on the side with some uh, scratchy plastic. Leather wrapped steering wheel, also this white contrasting uh, plastic paint and a fully digital central cockpit, which is nice. Hopping into the interior, we have these backlit buttons on the steering wheel. Wait, let me turn on the car so you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, let me also turn off the lights so we don't kill the battery. Done. Okay, so you have a very modern looking interior with the central instrument cluster stuffed towards the dashboard because as, as I mentioned before, you have the option of getting a three-seater bench in the front instead of the storage uh, central console place. As well as cup holders and this cool box, which is basically like a small refrigerator inside your car. Very nice, it's also a, an option on the first edition. As for the central dash, you have, as I mentioned before, everything stuffed into one place between your AC controls and your off-road controls. Wait, uh, all right, there you go. And to adjust uh, the fan speed, you just have to click on the button and increase it. It's pretty nice how they're using uh, like these dials for many different features, as well as you can change your driving modes by clicking on the top one. To switch between comfort, sand, gravel, uh, and all of that. Also aided by the front cameras of the car for better off-roading and approach angle. One other cool feature is the weight sensing, which detects how high or low the water level is to the car, and it adjusts it automatically depending on your suspension, which you can regulate through these buttons over here, as well as other controls, aside from the AC, of course, such as the hill descent control. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We also have the volume controls on the right next to the passenger because the driver has their own uh, controls on the steering wheel. Which as mentioned before are backlit. So uh, they change accordingly, depends on what you, what you have on your digital dash from programs to settings. And it's pretty cool how uh, Land Rover is again using one space for many different functions. So what I love about this digital dash, similar to Audi's right now, you can have a full map on the screen. Let me just try to see if I can move this program on the side. I think it's because I have the, the car mode in sand or gravel or something. It's, yeah, it's showing me like some settings for the car. Wait, hold up. Let me, let me put it back in comfort. Yeah. 
It should work. Did it do it? Yes, that's it. Okay, perfect. So you guys have a full GPS screen on your digital dashboard in front of you, as well as of course on the central dash screen or entertainment system here, which is very intuitive as well. Where you can also have a full map or access your entertainment, such as music and Bluetooth and phone connectivity. So uh, two very large screens on a modern off-roader, which can help of course with everything. You also have these handles on top for when you are going on extreme terrain, you can grab on and <laughs> hold on for dear life. And it's pretty cool how we have this Defender logo over here just to you know make you feel like you're in something special. And what's interesting is how many power outlets this car has. I mean, we have one here on top and a few at the bottom, and there's even more in the back and the back of the seats as well. So, oh, and there's a two pin power outlet in the trunk as well, which we'll get to in a second. Check out this massive storage space. Again, I love how the olive green paint is continued throughout the interior of the car and uh, it just looks very utilitarian. Ah, another feature I love about Range Rovers and Land Rovers is this, so check it out guys. When you open the door, it checks if there's an obstacle coming, a car, a bike, and uh, warns you before you open the door and hit someone. Damaging your very expensive car and maybe causing harm to a pedestrian or a biker. Quickly moving on to the back, we also have these blind spot warning lights on the doors, similar to the front. Very open and spacious looking interior. Let me see if I can get in. All right. So with the back seats, we also have these charging ports on the door, uh, on the seat, sorry. With many more in the back of the central console, we actually have four. So you can charge all your devices while you're on the go and never be caught short without any power. Dual zone AC controls in the back as well, which are off right now. And uh, yeah, very open and very, very good headroom actually, especially with this panoramic sunroof. It feels very open and spacious and light. And these Safari Alpine openings in the roof, which let's be honest, you're not really gonna see much out of unless it's a very large animal and a tree right above you, which I would suggest you move. But the car can be configured as a seven seater, so I'm guessing these openings can also help bring light to the back of the car. Speaking of the back, let's go check it out. I love this. <laughs> so the back is lined with this black plastic rubber thing that's very easy to clean off if you have any mud or dust, and the cover is very flimsy. Very easy to put away, but I hear it's very hard to put back, so I'm not even gonna bother with it, guys. What else? We also have this very, very useful power outlet where you can plug any appliances when you're on the go. And since the car has air suspension as standard, you can click a button to lower the trunk when you want to put some stuff, some heavy stuff in the trunk where, so you don't you know, do your back in. I can't tell if you guys are seeing this on camera, but the car is lowering in the back. Yeah, it makes it more convenient to put some heavy stuff in the trunk without having to carry it all the way up. And it also has a soft closing trunk because that's what you need when you're in the outdoors, a soft closing trunk. One thing I did forget to mention is the performance. My bad, guys. All right, so another interesting feature is this thing that just blocks the hood latch when the door is closed, which I really don't understand, but uh, yeah, it's another interesting feature of the Defender. So in terms of performance, the Defenders coming to Lebanon are the six-cylinder versions, the 3.0 six-cylinder, 395 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. We also have 406 foot-pounds of torque, which is ideal for off-roading. I mean, you don't, you don't need much more than that. It's not a car made to go fast, it's a car made to go everywhere. Classic jumper cables in a showroom. So yeah, it's a major step up compared to the old Defender, which was very underpowered. And there you have it. That concludes our in-depth tour of the 2020 brand new Land Rover Defender. Does it deserve to be called the Defender? I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to let me know in the comments if you guys think it's gonna be as iconic. But there is no doubt that it is a very, very capable off-roader as a Defender should be. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like it, if you guys don't, if you guys prefer the Wrangler or the upcoming brand new Bronco. 
So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did making it and I will see you on the next one.